Otherwise, you get, you know, this is a really good example of where the blade was only, actually what happened was the board was offset. The blade was only, comes down to about here. And so these paste, there's no paste rolling, no deposits, no nothing. Tack angle, somewhere usually around, around 60. We've seen some other ones. And that angle comes into play as far as the amount of force or the energy that you're putting in, into the paste. But not a whole lot of variation here these days. Um, on, on the PCB design, the things that can affect um, you know, your print, is it rigid material, very flexible? Uh, warpage can be an issue. The surface finish and solder mask also uh, play a role. Um, you know, not a you know, great cartoon, but I've seen hassles that are like angled, you know, and so you got, you know, one edge of the hassle is actually gasketing well to the board and the other end's kind of off. We talked about the off-contact printing, right, and what you're going to get a lot of times is an uneven deposit and you're trying to figure it out and know what's going on and it's actually the surface finish. Not happens often, but can happen. Uh, and OSP by far is not the only one that's flat. I mean, there are all the other immersion finishes and Enig and things like that. And you can get hassle flat too if you have a good, you know, provider, good quality provider. So, um, but that's something that can actually have an effect um, where you see some kind of dog ears and, and some inconsistent prints there. Um, the solder mask has got to be well aligned. Um, obviously, you don't want it to say, you know, be over the pads. That's usually not a good thing for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, where it's inconsistent. So you have like, you know, the mask is up over the pads. Well, what's the stencil going to touch first? It's going to hit that solder mask first, which is then going to give you a gap between the pad and the stencil, which is not what we want. Okay. Um, and you typically, you know, want that mask to be below the pads. Uh, if the pads are kind of way down here deep, once again, you're not getting good contact. Um, and you're not going to get the, so the other thing that can happen is this stencil, say it's a five mil stencil, okay? So you expect a five mil deposit on that pad. But when you have this gap, that paste is going to roll, it's going to fill everything, including it's going to get squished down in here, but that's no longer a five mil deposit. Now it's five and a half, maybe it's six, you know, and then maybe it's a fine pitch component and you printed five with a 10% reduction for a reason because you didn't want bridging. But now you've got five and a half, six mil. Now it's squeezed out to the edges. Now you get bridging, can't figure out what's going on. And it's something like that. You know, you look at it and you do all the stuff you do typically to check gasketing and everything looks fine. Okay, yeah, the board's up against the bottom of the stencil, everything looks good, but you're still getting all this kind of, you know, effect and that could be the reason. So, talked about, non, the other thing non-contact can do is, is leave the squeeze out or this uh, solder balling. You know, I think once a week maybe we get a phone call from someone, something wrong with the paste, I'm getting solder balls everywhere, I don't know what's going on. Have you wiped the bottom of your stencil? What? You guys have an underside stencil wipe? I don't know, I'm not the guy that usually runs the printer, let me find out. Oh wait, we're supposed to wipe the bottom of the stencil? You know, or they wipe it but they don't wipe it and actually remove anything, right? It's the, the wet wipe with the solvent thing that's not filled anymore, right? Or the vacuum's not on, so they don't have the vacuum wipe going. Um, so instead of wiping, what they're doing is just kind of smearing more stuff there. Um, and so a lot of times you get those satellite spheres somewhere on the board, uh, somewhere on the, it's not really, everyone likes to blame the paste. Hey, we're, it's easy, we're a good punching bag. Um, but a lot of, could be somewhere else in the process. That underside wipe isn't happening. Or if you have to do it too often because there is a lot of stuff underneath there, you need to look at, are you running your pressure too high? Are you not gasketing well? Why, you, why do you have to get, why do you have to wipe after every print? Okay, you shouldn't have to be. Why is there so much paste underneath the stencil? Okay, so there's other things to go into that, yeah, this is our process that we set up to basically slap a Band-Aid on a problem that's actually caused by something else. You fix that other issue, you're still gonna have to do underside stencil wipes, maybe not as often. And then, of course, if they get clogged up, you end up getting miss, misses and ugly deposits. And... But nice underside wipe, nice and clean. Everything's happy. Look at that. It's beautiful. Look at that. Nice, big, happy deposits. You may have seen those earlier today in this presentation. <laughs> so that's what we want. That's what we'd like to see. Talked about these already. But... So what I'm going to do now is show a couple different defects 
that can happen. So I've talked about you know, starting with a low pressure. And typically, if your pressure is too low, you'll get the stencil fogging. If you get it over the whole stencil, that's typically a pressure effect. Keep raising the pressure up to get a nice clean sweep. If you're getting isolated pockets of fogging, that's usually a, a support effect. Okay, or the one I always like is the strip in the middle. You know, and you look at the, at the squeegee and it's got this little notch in it because someone decided to drop it and not tell anybody. They were taking it off and they dropped it on the edge of the stencil, right on that aluminum frame or on the edge of the thing. And don't tell anybody, put it back. And then all of a sudden you got this notch running down the middle of your, your board. Um, not so good. A lot of times with this, you'll get the fogging and you'll get paste will stick here and not deposit down, which is why you get stuff like that. Um, or you get too much paste and then you get that kind of bridging effect. So low pressure or too fast of a speed. You'll see that there. Uh, here's, we get flux bleeding. It's kind of hard to see here on the screen, but your pressure's too high and you're just squeezing the heck out of it and you'll end up getting flux bleed and stuff like that. Um, same thing here, you'll see that, see that kind of halo around there. This is just a plain FR4 board, no solder mask. Uh, I'm bridging due to high pressure, squeezing the snot out of it. That's why, you know, I've gone in some places just, hey, let's crank the machine up, max pressure, max speed, let's go, hey, print's fine. Yep, it does that time, but then eventually you're gonna run into things like this down here. Too low pressure, you run into stuff like that. So, and, and out of these, the snap-off is important for contact, but really tooling is an area where we see a lot of uh, issues develop. Um, and a lot of it can be things like the tooling and everything was set up, and then the next batch of boards comes in, and the thickness is a little bit different, right? So now your tooling mount was optimized for what you had before. Depending on the type of tooling that you have and how it's set up, the board thickness changes, or someone revved the design and didn't tell anybody on the line. Not that that ever happens, I'm sure. But, you know, they changed something that made the boards thinner or you know, they've changed the, the lands or something like that. So, so here we see it's not good separation speed, too slow, you'll get some of that extra, um, extra stuff coming out. Um, this is where they're doing off contact printing. Um, here's that strip that I talked about earlier um, where you have the, the squeegee blade is, is damaged. So you'll see that strip of paste and that corresponds to uh, deposits not, not looking right. Usually this is a clear sign. Usually people can pick that up pretty quick. Uh, I talked about, you know, fogging in localized areas. That's if your board support is not good underneath, say underneath these. So as you're printing, what happens is the board kind of deforms as the squeegee comes across. Uh, so you don't get good contact. And then basically your pressure is different, right? The squeegee is pushing against the stencil, which is pushing against the board, which sets the pressure. Well, when that board deforms, that pressure is actually less, and therefore it's as if you just lowered the pressure. And that's why you get this fogging effect, because you're not causing the paste to roll, you're not shear thinning it enough, you're not filling those apertures, and you're giving yourself uh, an area of paste that's uh, fogged there. Sometimes too high a pressure, you can get scooping or flux bleed, because um, the, basically the blade's coming in so hard, it actually deforms into that aperture and scoops it out. So we talked about low pressures, fogging, you'll see here. But up that pressure and speed and you'll get a nice clean sweep and then that gets you what you want. There is a squeegee sweeping clean through the magic of PowerPoint animation. So um, board supports the last thing I'm gonna talk about here. So, um, lots of different ways to do it, dedicated fixturing, vacuum hold down, sucking in boards, basically just, just have the support there so that board, especially the thinner your boards are, the more important support is because they're going to deform, right? If you just got them sitting on the rails, the blade comes through, the board's going to go where? And you're not going to print anything close to what you think you're printing, okay? It could be a lot more complicated if it's double-sided, you know, all you have, now you have components and everything on the bottom side, now you get a little more creative with your tooling options. Uh, there are plenty of, of systems out there to do that. Um, you know, the, the tiny pins that hold in between components. If you don't do it, you get this kind of warping effect and then your print is, gets all kinds of squirrely from that. So, not recommended. And then, we already talked about this. It's in there again. Okay. So, 
hopefully this gives you guys a little bit of an overview of the printing process. There's obviously the material factors I think I've, I've kind of carried through all the way. You know, the rheology, the shear thinning is an important factor, the powder size, really are the two pace factors that matter most. But as far as selecting, but then all the process parameter things that you do also need to work with that material, right? There's an interaction there. And so if you go from vendor A to vendor B, you're going to need, need to redo some of that stuff, the speed, the pressure. Very rarely is it just, hey, I took this, get rid of that one, drop this one in, and everything stays exactly the same. You usually need to do a little bit of a tweaking to optimize it. It may work, but are you getting the best, most consistent print you can? There are ways to always optimize it. And so the factors here, speed, pressure, gasketing, the stencil, the squeegee, the tooling, the board itself all factor in as well. So the proper knowledge, the materials, you know, high speed, precise printing is really easily attainable. And I think the fact that we have electronics in almost every aspect of our life today is a testament to that, right? We talk, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have been to many print seminars. I've done a few of them. It's something we're always looking to improve or change something we need to keep an eye on. But if you do your work up front, you select the right material, you do your homework on the process, you can make an easily repeatable, consistent process. Okay, thank you. Be happy to answer any questions anybody has. Yes? Uh, paste mixers. Uh, I've heard mixed um, views about this, but some say separate flux from the base, that would be not good.